Dzień dobry, panie i panowie. What a beautiful day here in Warsaw. Absolutely a stunning day. And you know what? I really, really like this neighborhood here. Like, I love these buildings. I don't know why. They just look so cool. They're so, they're all the same. And they're all kind of clean. And actually, it looks like they're renting that, that, that little, uh, little balcony thing over there. That little apartment over there. It looks awesome. There's like four of them. Freaking cool. And today, I want to talk to you about a very, very important topic. And that's assimilation into a culture. Integration into a culture. Because... Let's face it, at the end of the day, if you're staying in a foreign country where you're not, uh, you know, you're not a native, you don't have citizenship, you're not from there, you're either a tourist or if you are trying to integrate. There's no middle ground and there's really no other way to look at it because once the tourist visa expires, you're technically no longer a tourist and you have to think about the next steps. And so I want to talk about ways that a foreigner can integrate into Polish culture, into Polish society. You know, it's funny. If this was anywhere else, uh, it, it wouldn't look that good. But here, it just, I don't know, it's like in the middle of the center, kind of. And, you know, you can just leave your, you know, leave your apartment, walk around. Everything is close by. Even these kind of buildings, they have their own charm here. And I'll tell you why they have their own charm. Because they're clean, because they're taken care of. And that's, you know, that's always a great thing as opposed to, right, a lot of places far in Eastern Europe where you're going to see similar type of uh, buildings. But they're going to look like a complete mess. And you're going to fall into a deep depression. But here, beautiful. Beautiful. And so assimilation or integration is really the natural progression of things. But before I start kind of discussing it, I want to make an important point. Assimilation and integration are very, very subjective. And not only do they matter country by country, they also matter on a bunch of other factors. And it's still a big question if you can completely assimilate, completely integrate, even that statement by itself is very, very subjective. And I'm going to touch upon that uh, with my thoughts as it's related here to Poland, maybe some other experience towards the end of the video. And so I just left that area. And as exactly as I was saying, I'm right here, stone's throw away, moments away from the center, the, the, uh, the business district. And that is a huge benefit, right? Because we have all of these developments here and I can just walk and here we are we have the lot we have we work we have other ones over there and I think that's awesome there's that marvel of architecture again as you can see it's built but it's got those three columns so not to block the light and I've I've showed you to you guys before and you guys confirmed my thinking and I've never seen this anywhere else or at least I haven't noticed it and you're never going to see something like this in Eastern Europe. Never in your wildest dreams. So this is very, very cool, actually. As you can see, Poland is starting to come alive today. Everybody's out. It's like it's becoming a completely different country. And that makes sense. Because the weather definitely dictates a lot. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about, and this is probably the most important thing by far, or at least it's up there, is that language. You gotta master the language. There's no rounded, there's no shortcuts. There's no another way of looking at it. Language is the gateway to culture. And so if you don't know the language, everything I'm gonna be talking about uh, later on doesn't make a difference. And really your level of the language dictates how much of the other things that you need to do that I'm gonna be discussing uh, a little bit later. But frankly, language is the key and i have a hard time understanding like the mentality of the people that live in various countries for many years and they still do not they don't really master the language like okay i understand six months one year but if you you know if i see somebody for like living in a country for five years ten years that's for me hard to understand now 
what should be the level of your language in my view and in my experience living you know abroad trying to integrate into different countries learn languages that language that level of the language should be a little bit more than conversational so in other words it's not enough to know merely the survivor level right so for instance at this point i can kind of kind of get by here in poland with my polish it's kind of that survivor level after two months i can kind of ask where's the bus stop where's the uh, the bathroom where is this where is that i don't have this uh, i can't do it you know how long to wait you know that kind of thing i can kind of survive but that's not enough on the other hand i don't believe you need to know a super high level you know language so there are various levels like a1 a2 i don't really know but from what i understand something like c2 is high level meaning like you can you know you can do business negotiations stuff like that you don't need to know that so i would say your level of the language needs to be kind of on the b level so a little bit more than kind of what i know now and a little bit more than survival level but it does not need to be to a point where you can you know discuss buying buying out you know like a a hostile merger of a, a small company right you don't you don't need to know that much where you can talk about buying twitter or something like that so somewhere in the middle although i would say you would get bonus points and i think that's important knowing the slang the jokes the various little expressions that only someone would know after having lived here for a set amount of time and this is something i noticed when i was learning other languages you know those little colloquialisms that little slang those little things those little things that only certain people know that like you know people that have just arrived would not know it really bridges the gap when you're talking to people and trying to establish a relationship which is really the point of it all right because like i said language is really the gateway to culture and as a result the more you can communicate the more you can connect the better your success is going to be another thing i really like about warsaw is that i'm in a business area right there's a bus business district i'm surrounded by kind of skyscrapers but yet you know you have a very um you know quaint areas all over the cities you got benches you got greenery that is you know more typical of cities a little bit away from the center right which is kind of what i like so you got your place of tranquility and this is all over warsaw here these little parks these little areas lots of greenery there was one area down there and yet you're right here near the business district as an example there's the building over there right i just walked a little bit and guess what we have we have like a park over there where people can just chill and even some residential buildings it's all kind of mixed in and for me i find that fascinating to be honest with you i do find it fascinating i'm not just saying that i find that absolutely fascinating because you know not a lot of cities are like this a lot of cities they kind of they're grouped right ne different neighborhoods are grouped in a certain way but i can go have a business meeting or meet somebody there and then i'm like right here in the park right like even new york with all its glory and i know how you guys love my new york comparisons i can't say that about new york because in new york yeah you got big parks and stuff you got central park and all that but at the end of the day you pick and choose the area here you don't really need to do that i can have you know i can i can go over there you know into, into an office building then i'm here just chilling as you can see people are doing that now the next thing that's very very important on the road to integration and assimilation in a foreign place is that you have to create some kind of a social circle some kind of a community around you that it will help you to you know to understand the place better and really it's all about the people at the end of the day if you don't know you know local people you know what kind of links do you have to the country if you don't know any local people if you uh, do not keep in a, a um, in contact with local people if you do not form relationship with local people then you know what kind of you know what, what kind of integration or assimilation can we really be talking about 
And sadly, uh, as the case, something that I've noticed, for instance, when I lived in New York, uh, there are all kinds of immigrant communities. For instance, uh, there's an area in, in Brooklyn, and really lots of areas, but the main area is Brighton Beach, where you have a lot of um, mostly Russian-speaking immigrants from Russia, from Ukraine, from Belarus, Moldova. And many of them, you know, and arguably these would be people a little bit older, have been living in that area for many, many years. And they can, they're essentially living in a bubble because they can go shopping, they can go, you know, get some services, anything that they need to do, they can essentially do in their own language. And as a result, they never really need to assimilate or integrate. And it's just like being back home. And it's the same case for lots of countries. For instance, in Thailand, uh, when I visited, I uh, got to know people that, you know, never really learned a word of Thai, never really connected with the local population, simply lived there for the weather and just continue to, to do what they, they would do if they were back home. And this is definitely not the path that I want to take. I don't want to be here in Poland and, uh, you know, only speak uh, my language or only speak in English and just get to know uh, people just like me, although that's definitely great. Uh, my strategy is really about forming connections with uh, people that live here. And when I used to live in other countries, uh, one of my kind of secret weapons was um, I've been training uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a long time. So I would enroll in different clubs, different uh, areas, and I would train with locals. And that has been amazing because that was one of the best ways that I learned that I could make friends in all kinds of countries. So like, you know, Brazil, Serbia, Lithuania, many other countries It enabled me to meet local, the lo uh, local population. And as a result, I've kept in touch with them for a long time. For instance, in Lithuania, I still keep in touch with a couple of people. And that has really helped me to kind of connect to the, co to the country in a more natural way, right? Instead of kind of being in a bubble. Now, here in Poland, things, uh, you know, worked out to be a little bit different because we were able to uh, meet a lot of people. A lot of people reached out to us, which has been great. And we were able to find apartments and stuff like that. And I'm kind of continuing in that tradition. I am um, trying to kind of reach out to different people and uh, we're going to have meetups. And uh, a lot of these people, they became like good good acquaintances and good friends that I can kind of reach out in the future for anything that I need. But having said that, it's important to know that this is an ongoing process. This is not something that you do once and you stop doing it. This is a continuation. This is probably the most advanced gym I've ever been to. Everything is computerized, everything just pay. You got, um, you know, you got your credit card. I think it even has a fingerprint scanner there. And then you just enter it there by showing the app, just like that. Look at that. Many, many minutes later. Brooklyn in the house. You gotta check out this place one day. Now the next point that is important to know is that you have to know where you are. You have to know the country. But this is important. It's not only about understanding the country. It's about having a deeper knowledge of the cities, the, uh, you know, a little bit of history behind them. So for instance, here I am in Poland. I'm in Warsaw. Warsaw is the capital of Poland. But we've also been to Gdansk. You know, Gdansk is a very important city. There's a lot of history there. It was known as the free city of Gdansk. It's a very beautiful city. So you could say, okay, I've been to Gdansk. I used to live there. Uh, they have Westerplatte, uh, Lech Walesa. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It has an office there. Something that I've heard uh, from one of, the, one of the volunteers when I was there. Um, great, you know, you can have a kind of a deeper conversation with people you can have a deeper knowledge and this is very important and this is also something that I've done pretty much in every country where I've been because it's you know the key here is not to be this ignorant person that's just living in one place living in one thing and does not know anything beyond the neighborhood they're at right it's about kind of expanding your horizons and you know geographically socially culturally understanding the place where you're at 
is important. There is the glorious Warsaw Centralna that I love going to. Such a cool place. So many possibilities. Take a train anywhere, domestically or internationally, anywhere you want. You know, one thing I noticed is just by being in this country and by a combination of kind of this pure osmosis, this passive listening, basically, and active listening, basically studying the language and studying the phrases and, and stuff like that. I am understanding a lot of what people are saying. And also I'm in situations where I'm like, was that uh, Ukrainian or was that Polish? Because I gotta listen more, but sometimes I just hear a couple of phrases in passing. And that's a great thing because I understand it. I just, <laughs> I don't know yet what language it is. The next point I wanna talk about is kind of a corollary. It's kind of a connection to the previous point and that is you got to know the background of the country right it's like when you meet a person and you want to do business with them uh, or you want to you know enter into some kind of relationship with them uh, it's important to kind of know the background right same thing uh, with the country what I'm when I'm saying background I am referring to the history you know what, what did the country experience what's uh, you know how did it come together what are the country's heroes? What did the people of this country fight for? What are, you know, you know what, what are some of the things around it? Now, this is obviously important and it's really up to you how far you want to take it. I got to admit, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not a huge history person. I love history. It was never my strong point. But um, whenever I'm in a place that I really want to understand, I want to learn kind of its history. I want to see how it was formed. How do people think? What, you know, what, what do people like? What they don't like? And, and a lot of times, uh, you know, history explains a lot about that. I got to be honest, like, like, for instance, with Ukraine, obviously, I don't know how the country was formed from, you know, from the beginning, right? But I do know it's uh it's history all the way from the independence from soviet union and so from 1991 until present day i know the history of the country fairly well i know all the changes that have happened i know things that the country endured and that's kind of what i was doing in other places because history is one of those things that affects everything that we do there are people that are very very passionate about the country's history and you can kind of talk to them and you can connect by knowing this, by knowing the background in ways you cannot connect otherwise. Because, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the mentality, a lot of thinking, a lot of how people act, think, in many ways is shaped by their surroundings and is kind of shaped by what, what the country has endured. And when you are learning that, you're one step closer to, you know, connecting with people on a very kind of emotional level. And that's very, very important. The next point is kind of extra, it's extra credit, but I would say it's still very, very important, is that you have to understand the political system, the political structure, the current leaders in the country where you are at right now. And so, you kind of have to know who is the president, who is the prime minister, uh, but you kind of have to know a little bit beyond that. Like, what do they represent? Uh, are they left? Are they right? Are they conservative? Are they liberal? This is important because in many countries, not in all countries, but in, in many countries, politics plays a huge, huge role in the kind of the social, the structure, the, um, the society and all of that. Politics is a huge part in U.S. And so in U.S., like, you know, you have to know, like, what's going on because people are going to come up and ask you, like, you know, are you, you know, are you left? Are you right? Are you Republican? Are you Democrat? It's going to be in the conversation somewhere. Politics is not only about arguing whether, you know, conservatives better than liberal or liberals better, better than conservative or we need more right wing, left wing. It's about connecting with people because chances are the people you meet, especially if they're a little bit older, for the most part, they are going to be savvy about the political situation in the country. And you can at least connect 
by telling them, hey, I think, you know, this guy's doing a great job or I think, uh, you know, this president is doing a great job. I had a situation like that in Dansk. Started talking to somebody and we were talking about one president from another country. And then I said, well, Andrzej Duda is, uh, you know, so-and-so. And that was, you know, that scores points because I was just in the country for a couple of weeks at that point. And so while I am fairly apolitical, I understand the value of understanding the political structure, um, how, how it influences, whether, you know, this president or somebody else did, a, did an important thing. And really it kind of circles back to the fact of history. Right, because you know, in many countries, especially like in the past, uh, in you know, in Europe, uh, a lot of kind of the growth of the country and the stability of the country had to do with politicians. In many cases, I spent some time in the Balkans. I used to live in Serbia for a little bit, and politics over there are very, very complex. But because I knew both sides of the picture, I can connect with people in ways that they wouldn't have expected of somebody who is a complete outsider like me and so it's not only about knowing politics but it's knowing when to kind of talk about it and how you can use history and kind of the political institutions kind of the politics there as a way of connecting with people if you learn it right if you do it right you can connect in, uh, with people in many ways that you wouldn't be able to connect otherwise and that's all a big part of living in the country of assimilating into the society into the culture and integrating yourself with the people ah back to ohota you know if this was the winter or this was cold and if it wasn't may i would probably take one of those trams to get home but being this is the beginning of may it's gorgeous people are just walking around with their some in shorts t-shirts i'm gonna be doing a lot more walking from now on simply because it's beautiful it's gorgeous and this is kind of the beginning of the time where this part of the world is really gonna shine now the last point that i want to cover and this is about volunteering and getting out there and doing some kind of events where you're putting yourself out in in a way where you can meet other people right we did this back in gdansk where we went to a refugee center and we asked them how we can help to donate to the to the effort to the refugees that are that are coming from Ukraine. And this actually was um, it, it turned out to be a lot bigger than we expected because in a way we were able to connect with people and we were able to connect with locals who you know you know who eventually you know some people gave us their numbers and they're like listen if you need anything if you need any help in the future. Uh, if you're having any issues here, uh, just contact us, right? And so this established, this uh, enabled us to establish connections in ways that we couldn't have done it before. Now, I also want to talk about the elephant in the room. And that is the question of whether it is truly possible to assimilate or integrate yourself into the society, into the culture so well that you are one of them. And this is arguably like a complex question because it really depends on two things it depends kind of on how on the country right on, on what it means to be you know that person that you know learned the language understands the history and all that and it also depends on how others perceive you some people believe that if you have you know lived the, lived there long enough maybe you have a permanent residence or uh, some other document and you speak the language fluently and you understand you know the culture you have a lot of friends you know basically you covered all the points that i talked about then you're pretty much assimilated you are integrated you can call yourself a local other people believe that you will never be you know a person part of the country you will never be you know one of one of us let's just say uh if you were not born there if you were not you know if you don't have like a bloodline uh, from the family if you don't have any ancestors from there so this is a rather complex uh, subject and it really touches upon things where we are going into an area that you can't really control. I fully believe that if you cover all the points that I talked about, um, then integration and assimilation will be a natural progression. It, you will be, you know, you will be considered as one 
perhaps you're not going to be, you know, you will always be viewed as somebody who was born elsewhere. But for the, you know, for the purpose of, uh, you know, communicating with you, for the purpose of dealing with you, you will be considered by many as being one of them, one of us, as you say. But ultimately, the way I'm looking at it is that if you do all of that, right, if one does all that, you're just going to be helping yourself. You're going to be doing yourself a great service of being able to connect with people in ways that you couldn't have done it before and in ways that a tourist who is you know merely in the country for a week or just on a weekend trip or a couple of weeks can never do and in my view that's the most important thing right because at the end of the day what is more important than being able to connect with people on a much deeper level and there is across the street is the world famous Bedronka where I need to go right now and do a little bit of shop and so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys next time